Hello everybody, Mazel Tov. Sorry about that, I didn't realize how loud that was. Mazel Tov. This song? Okay. Oh, I'm taking a video. Okay. okay. There's a uh, fascinating, fascinating uh, halacha that, uh, that really applies here to, uh, to Shevet Rambos. But it's gonna, it's gonna take us on a, on a slight roller coaster and uh, some embarrassing stories along the way. There's a, uh, before B'nai Israel goes out to war, there's a Kohen called the Kohen HaMashiach that comes out, to, uh, comes out to, the, to the battlefield and he stands in front of the troops and he gives a, a pep talk, like a, almost like a pep rally. And at this, at this pep talk, the Kohen Gado, the Kohen Mashiach, excuse me, announces to the people that any soldier who fights for Yichud Hashem, puts his family off to the side, doesn't think about his family, only thinks about what they're supposed to be fighting for, doesn't worry about anything else, puts their entire trust in God, that soldier is guaranteed to return home safely and build, here's where the phrase comes from, a bayit neman b'Yisrael. That's where we get this phrase from, from the, from the, in the speech of the Kohen HaMashiach. It's a very strange promise to be made to a soldier, a soldier that's going out. But what makes it even stranger is if you take a couple of lines before what the Kohen HaMashiach says, the Kohen HaMashiach is supposed to rally the troops, and he stands up in front of the whole nation, they're all standing there, you have to picture the scene, and he says, anybody that's standing here that's built a vineyard, that's planted a vineyard in the last year, anybody in the last year that built a house, anybody in the last year that got married, you should go home. Why should you go home? Because, God forbid, something should happen to you on the battlefield. Then, you won't be able to, now what we would say is, you won't be able to enjoy the fruits of the vineyard, you won't be able to enjoy your home, and you won't be able to enjoy a life with your new wife. But instead, the coin says, and this is by God's edict, the coin says something <coughs> so strange. He says, if God forbid something happens to you on the field, someone else will get to enjoy your vineyard. Someone else will get to enjoy your home. And someone else will end up marrying your wife. Such a strange thing to say. Right before you go out to war, these are people, these are soldiers who are about to be told that the only thing they should be thinking about is their trust in God and the, fight, and the fact that they're fighting for the unity of God. And what do we say to the soldier? We know what you're really worried about. You're worried about your vineyard, that someone else is going to get it. Worried about your house, someone else is going to enjoy it. Worried about your wife, somebody else is going to get to marry her. That's the strangest, most base type of worry that somebody could have. These are supposed to be our soldiers, who are the greatest fighters, not just in terms of warriors, but in terms of the reason why they're fighting, their motivation. It's very hard, at least for me, to understand. I was thinking about it earlier. And if you look at the three areas that we're talking about, the vineyard, the house, spouse, those really represent three areas of what a soldier, of what a person is doing in this world. What we're supposed to, as Jews, the, the task that we're supposed to foment in our lives. And that is, we don't just live our lives for ourselves as Jews. We're continuing ourselves for the next couple of generations. This is about our future. That's the whole reason why we're here. Building a vineyard, planting that vineyard, enjoying the fruits, that's settling the land. Building a house is creating and playing a part in the community. And a spouse, marrying a spouse, that's where you start the tradition in people, in the nation itself. And the coin is saying, not that somebody else might enjoy this, but think about the soldier who's standing there who's in his fifth year of marriage or has been lived in his house for five years and been enjoying the fruits of the vine for five years already. So all of a sudden, this soldier isn't worried about those. He has no, none of these concerns. Eh, I've been married to my wife for five years. Somebody else marries her. Okay, it's not a big deal. He doesn't have those same fears. There's something special about that first year. That first year is where we lay the foundation. It's where we set what's going to happen for the rest of our lives. And that's why the first year, that first year is that task that that soldier has that this is the year, I, I don't want to miss this. 
If somebody else takes my vineyard, I didn't get a chance to settle the land that first year. If somebody else lives in my house, I didn't get the chance to build the community. And if somebody else marries my wife, I didn't get the chance to build our tradition, our Masora. That's what I want to be home for. And the Koi Mashiach says, fighting in a war is incredibly important for the nation. But so are these three areas. So is settling the land. So is playing a part in the community. And so is building a tradition. On the drive over here, I did a classic rabbi trick. I turned to my children and I said, give me one story that you have in mind. So for Eliana, I had my own story. My own story is I spent this afternoon looking back. We got to live with Eliana and her family in Boca for three years. And we've gotten a lot closer to Eliana in the last couple of years than those first years in Boca. And I looked, I invited Eliana to our house. I keep records of who I invited, who says no, most importantly. <laughs> and we invited Eliana 48 times to our house. And Eliana, let's tell the crowd, how many times did you eat over? Yeah. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> but over the last three, over the last couple of years, over the last couple of years, Eliana has become such a part of our house that there is not enough numbers in the world to count the amount of times that she stayed and eaten over at our house, and every moment has been enjoyable. But one stuck out that our family said was, our, we have a son, Moshe, who you can all be thankful is not here. And <laughs> Moshe, Moshe, who's wonderful, complained for five straight days of a bellyache, and then a fever. And that was at that point that on a Friday afternoon we decided it might be time to go to the hospital, and he had his appendix out. And one person came and ran and saved the day, it wasn't me, saved the day to cook Shabbat. And that was Eliana. That was a story. So, obviously, with Don's, it's a little harder because we've only known Don's for a couple of months. So, what stories do we have? So, we don't have any of these great save the day stories. But what our kids did say, and kids pick up on this, is that Don's is the type of person who got up. Whenever Eliana wanted something, whatever it was, the couple of times that they'd both been to our house for Shabbat, whatever she needed anything or even just wanted something, Dad's immediately was responsive, proactive, and got it. We're talking about two people who excel in looking out for others. We talk about building a community, building the Masora, building our land, the three areas that we discuss with the soldier. As a nation, we can be confident that this will truly be a Bayit Nehemiah of Israel. Mazel tov. Mazel tov.